This is a, maybe a question relevant to the situation we are in also. How to come to terms with life while encountering deaths of known people? Yeah, because according to me, any loss at any time is sad, it causes a lot of grief, sometimes even anger comes up. So the intensity of all these feelings depends upon the attachment that you have with the one in your nervous and uh, and it is normal to be sad to be sometimes angry with the world angry with god and angry with yourself also but you know sort of staying there doesn't help you mm. so the only way to come out of it mm. and to be in the here and now is Way of by way of releasing it. Mm. Mm. Whichever way is, you know, you think is to cry mm. or okay, even to shout mm. or even to sort of, you know, sort of talk to somebody. Mm. Keep on talking, talking, talking. That's mm. very good, actually. I did that mm. when I was going through difficult time. Mm -hmm. Then actually one of the early trainers told me, so now I hear you talking about it all the time. Would you like to take a pause and uh, talk less about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is also, you know, uh, uh, facilitating my adult thinking mm -hmm. other than staying in the child ego state. Mm -hmm. And even there, it also it always helps to have a relationship. Relationship. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, I don't know, Nathan, have you read this book, Gilbold Taylor's uh, Stroke of Insight? No. It's a beautiful book. You must read it. It's a small book. Mm -hmm. she's, she's a brain scientist in power. And she was struck by a stroke. Oh. Brain. And she knew what was happening. That was the interesting part of it. Oh. But she couldn't. Have. But despite all the treatment, she says what really helped her to bounce back was her mother's care. Mm. Her mother's love. That's very amazing and it's it's touching. So it's um, the sentence which came to my mind is um, love is the healing power very much very much mm. love acceptance mm. recognition appreciation all these are actually uh, shades of love respect mm. 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 Yeah. yeah and there are Types of death, like for example, if someone dies through a sickness, then people around them go through a different... Uh, yeah, then, you know, if you really love the person, do you really want that person to suffer? Mm -hmm. I lost four of my very dear friends and mm -hmm. classmates in the last one year, okay? But there was one of them who was suffering from Parkinson. Mm -hmm. Although her death let me, I had a lot of grief about it, but I thought if I, her death was a relief for her, a relief for her. Oh my God, she was such an attractive, uh, uh, you know, talented person, but to see her in that wheelchair with no control over her legs and hands were really more devastating for me than for her. Yeah, yeah. So, so there are times when we feel that is a release and release for that person and the others around. Yeah. So yeah, this is one, 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 one way of the death we have experienced sometime in our life. There are deaths where someone commits a suicide. 
or you know someone needs an accident and then they die then it leaves a very different impact on the people sure, sure. a lot of times they are premature and they could have been avoided mm. but there i powerfully uh, you know sort of resonate with the idea of a script mm mm yeah okay because uh, uh suicide is definitely according to me mm. i'm not too sure is mental imbalance mm mm there could have been emotional hormonal imbalance there could have been you know sort of chemical imbalance it is a pathological state mm it is not accident of course um is something which is beyond your control sometimes you also set yourself up for accident yeah now the thing is these people have committed or accident they have died so it's it's over in that side yeah. this people around you know around um, yeah that is uh, not an easy each one takes their own pace and their own time to heal there again i think the support is what is important you mm. think of the old rituals that we had about mm. people coming in and you know being there in the house mm. and they are sort of staying with us or they are there uh, at least three days all the relatives are there mm. what is that mm. that also gives a lot of support i am not alone in this so i think uh, um living as a community in in some way and sharing this loss together as a community is something which is very important very important very important and it really helps to me mm mm if you look at you look back at all our uh, you know social rituals they all had a psychological uh, you know sort of dimension Mm-hmm. we never realized it we just uh, sort of uh, practiced it as a, as a ritual not understanding the spirit of it mm-hmm. imagine you are alone you are going through a difficult time and i call you and tell you what's happening within or i visit you and sort of sit with you for some time how would it be yeah it's certainly there is a relief yes and, and then some, some hope starts coming yes uh, and not only that you can sometimes share your grief mm-hmm. and that also helps you to release mm-hmm. that is why i say stroking is got a spiritual uh, dimension to it because you know when you sort of really resonate with a person like compassion generosity or <clears throat> they are all very powerful process of you know sort of helping the person to get back mm mm-hmm. okay so it's i think the loss um takes away some hope but people coming together brings back that hope to move on i think that's there is energy in there is energy, energy. a lot of energy yeah mm. i still remember um, i lost my uh, my niece mm. she was very young and she lost her husband in sleep oh just in sleep she was in her 40s mm. and you know she was in denial you see all of us go through different stages of mm. so what we did was me my two of my sisters all three of us really held her and you know slept on the same cot mm 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 we all slept on the same cot with her same cot mm mm-hmm. yes i i know uh, uh, i mean my then elder sister was the epitome of generosity and compassion Mm-hmm. during my surgery i had to undergo major surgeries 
and open heart surgery and the lung surgery and all that. So she was the one who will just stay there and hold my hand like this. Mm -hmm. And imagine what a support it is. It's, it's amazing. Um, I think it's a very simple gesture to hold the hand and be there. And yeah. it, what it makes to another person who is going through is, is amazing. Strength. Yeah, I was working in this cancer society here in Coimbatore. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we had to meet terminally in people. Mm. <clears throat> then there was one girl who had a, what would I say, a cancer of her, uh, you know, uh, not vagina, but mm. uh, uh, so, and she used to stink. Oh. oh. And the uh, everybody would, you know, it's not easy to be with her. Mm. But I sort of just stood there and said, I really go and really hold her. So that was the day she said, oh my God, I really feel that, you know, uh, there is somebody who mm. so, so terminally ill people and then you can't say, what is the point of talking to them? Mm. All you need to do is to touch mm. and to be with them. Mm. So, uh your voice was low at one point, so I'm stating it again so that it is... Yeah, because I was resonating with that yeah. you know, situation, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. So what I heard from you is that there was a cancer patient who was having some cancer, maybe around this vaginal... Cervix, cervix. Cervix, cervix so, cancer. Yeah. So she used to stink and no one go near her, but you went and held, hold her and she said, oh, this is a possibility. She was, you know... Able yeah. to feel mm. so many ways, you know, because terminally ill people and all that, there's nothing you can do other than just be with them. Mm. Mm. Be with them. Even people who are going to be, uh, you know, going through trauma, mm. I found that it's very easy. I mean, you can't, well, where is the point of talking anything to them? Mm. So the holding. Hmm. It's, it's interesting. That's what I think one human can give to another human being. And we can be generous about it. We can be very generous about it. But again, if you really look at it, it depends upon our personality and, uh, you know, the way we have been conditioned. Or Sometimes I say that, you know, if you haven't got it, you don't know how to give it. Mm, 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 mm. And maybe how to receive it also, even if it is coming. Yeah. Uh, people may. Yeah. True. Very true. Very true. So again, it emphasizes on the relationship support. I think that's a theme which is running through your. Acceptance. Acceptance. Mm. Love. Yes. Yeah, I, I understand. I think sometimes um, I distance myself when I'm sometimes sick. Or I think I need to be okay to allow people to be near me. when. Yes, yes. but uh, there are people who are very embarrassed. They can't be sort of, you know. Uh, yeah, but in I'm sure within them they are happy, but they do not know how to express. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's also possible. Yeah. yeah. So thanks, Sarah. This was a, a simple intervention. Like, okay, whatever it is, give a holding and be around, be there. And I think that, that, that can make a lot of difference. Thank you, Sarah, for this.